everybody. Welcome to episode 10, 11? 1,011? 1,011. 1,011. 10-11. You said it right. You said it right. But I took it now. You say the, the cool way, and then I just <laughs> did it totally lamely. All what right. just happened? Everything happened. We just Everything. finished quarterfinal round, and blood rounds are set. We're going to go through all of that. We've got team race we want to go over. Um, if, if this guy, the homer, he... Goes to the because our good <laughs> friends at Nike and he gets a Michigan shirt. They said you need to wear a Nike shirt on the show. I said that's a beautiful Michigan one you got right there. He, yeah, they had a great session, Christian. Four semifinalists. They did have a great session. I don't, you know, we always go in like weight class order and all that stuff, but like we got to talk about Lucas Davidson beat Younger Bastida. That is yeah. crazy. Probably the biggest yeah. upset of the quarterfinals. Yeah, you might be right. And uh, you know they were almost the victim of the biggest upset of the quarters with Sima. Almost beating Griffin. Yes. It was a lot of drama for, for Big Blue. But the Bastida, you know, kind of shame on us a little bit. Uh, no one talked about that upset. But at the same time, Davison, he lost twice to Feldman. It's like, ah, probably not. But if you go back to their match at Vegas, it was competitive. Very it's a competitive. one takedown match. And, you know, at this tournament, something like that should never surprise. But he gets that takedown late and beats younger Bastida, uh, disrupting the the semifinal we thought we were going to see Wyatt Hendrickson versus Younger Bastida not happening. It was interesting hearing hearing him say, someone asked him about his training partners. He said, Jaden Cox is really good at that outside swim, a high crotch, and that's what Younger's been doing all year. And he said that working with Jaden has helped him really prepare for that. Dang. And you saw it. He Younger was able to get in on it. Uh, it was either second or third period. He went straight to crotch lock roll through and uh, was able to avoid the takedown. The I, don't, I didn't get to see their first flurry. Did you get to no. see it? No. No, he's – Crazy tournament, always your your kind of your eyes are darting around, and you know that was a match where like you're like, all right, that's probably not one to pay attention to yet. And then next thing you know, he gets his single in the air and, and gets the finish. But I think we have. I don't. I start with our team scores, real yeah, quick. Yeah, do that. Why, why don't you I don't know if that. we can get them on screen, but in first place you have Penn State with 86 and a half points. Weird. In second you have Michigan with 50 and a half points. In third, Arizona State, also four semifinalists. That's crazy. With 44 and a half points. What are, who are their semifinalists, Christian? We got yeah. Richie Figueroa, yep. Kyle Parco, mm -hmm. Colton Schultz, and I skipped Ja'Cory. someone. In Ja'Cory Teamer, yep. the two seed. I don't know why I skipped him. That's okay. Um, also in fourth place, you got Iowa State with 42 points. In fifth, you have Iowa with 41 and a half points. Let's do the top ten. Ohio State in sixth with 36 points. Virginia Tech in seventh with 35 and a half. NC State in eighth with 33 and a half, Missouri in ninth with 33, and Oklahoma State tied for ninth with Missouri, also 33 points. You know, it's from obviously Penn State's going to win this tournament, but the the second, third, fourth, it's still very much up in the air. A team like Virginia Tech, NC State, even Missouri, they have the the horses to pull through here. So that tonight's round is going to go a long way in determining who ends up bringing home second and third place. Do um, you think we'll we'll have a pretty good idea of who will take it home tonight? Yeah. Yeah. I think we will. It'll be pretty well defined. I mean, if Arizona State punches three through to the finals, it, they'll be in pretty good shape to do it. Although, they're not going to have a lot of people helping them out in the morning session. We'll have a pretty good idea, I think. All right. You want to go to 125? Let's do it. Okay. Pull up the brackets real quick. So, figure over Davis. Yeah. I mean, uh, honestly, it's kind of like the figs we thought we were going to see all year showed up in the last month, maybe less than a month. And he's looked like that guy. And going into the, the quarterfinal round, I mean, this was a coin flip match. He got the um, the takedown. And, and Davis was coming towards at the end. I think there was a stall warning there. But um, not, not the most exciting match, but a great win for, for Braden Davis. Or for Richard Figueroa. Yeah. Well, we talked to him in his post-match interview. He, he goes, I'm a dog on top. And that's how he won the match. He, he got riding time. Yeah. And... Uh, yeah, I don't know. It wasn't exactly how I expected him. Thinking, watching Figueroa, his, he has really good offense. Yeah, I thought he would get to a score maybe if he, if that's how he won the match. In but. high school, he was always really great from from the top position. But I felt like it, it was that hasn't been a big signature of his wrestling it collegiately. But yeah, um, he he proved it there. Noto takes out Ramos in sudden victory. That was our All Star Classic match. Yes, at the time it was one versus two. I and, believe. And. Ramos won that meeting. Yes. And now Noto gets revenge. He's overtime. in the semis. Overtime takedown. Ayala overtime takedown. Almost a mirror image match against Troy Spratley. They go into sudden victory. Splits on a single. Finishes late. And then Barnett versus Smith. 
Yeah. What did uh, during our interview? You were there when we interviewed Barnett. You asked him, uh, did he take bottom on you in the second period? What did he say? Yeah. Well, so I mean, I couldn't believe it because I joked. So I'm sitting there on, on press row watching, and like you can't always see who signals what, right? You don't know. But when Smith was bottom in the second, I was like, oh, Barnett took top. He teched him 17-2 last time, and, you know, he's just going where he's good. No, Smith put himself there, got ridden out, and that got that put – and he was up 3-1 going into it. And then that, that let Barnett hang in the match. It goes to overtime because he gets away, riding time, 3-3. And then they go to tiebreakers, and you know that that's going to favor him, and he wins the tiebreakers. Although Smith, man, he had some opportunities – for reversals. But anyway. Smith was on a run, too. Oh, yeah, he looked really good. Um, and so I asked Barnett, what, what did you think when when he chose bottom? He's, he goes, dumb. He's <laughs> like, that's my best position. He's like, I just turned him a week ago um, at Big Tens. Uh, but I also asked him, like, hey, do you know that? Because he beat him 17-2. He's like, I knew it would be a different match because, you know, it's seventh-place match at Big Tens. No one's getting up for that. Um, Let's so dig into the blood rounds. Yeah, of 125 is crazy. I have a I have one for you, Christian. Let me read this to you. Hit it. We got returning national final finalist Ramos yeah. versus current two seed Luke Stanich in the blood round. What yeah, do you think about that one? That's so wild. And y- you know, you knew coming into this tournament we were going to have there's going to be some really anomalous like round of 12 type of matchups. But when you see it on the paper, there it's uh, it's insane. And you know, I don't know who you even favor in this matchup, but Stanish wrestles it tight, and Ramos has not been firing and looking to score as much, so it's probably going to be an overtime type of match if I had to guess. Yeah, I would, I would agree. Um, next, you got Davis and Volk. That's the one seed versus the five seed. Man, Volk was – blood round. Dude, this – so I watched Volk's uh, Provo match. He, um, he was winning – or he was down like 4-1. No, 4-2 with like no time left, and he gets uh, – he got the the Henson Arrington style oh, takedown take down where he still had his leg. He scooped scooped the ankle and was behind the arms and got the take. It was it was for sure a takedown um, against Provo. I mean, right at the very end to to punch his ticket through. Feels like Braden should win, but Volk is so tricky. Yeah, uh, Pool and Smith. Man, I mean, Smith shouldn't go under him either. Um, I, I mean, I would favor Caleb for sure in that matchup. Yeah, I would too. And then Jordan Spratley. Wow. How about Tanner Jordan? Who yeah. He beat? He, beat, he, he beat Pat McKee again. Yeah. And then he beat Unger. Okay. Solid. McKean Unger. So, yeah, I would, I would say I, w- I would favor Troy. Okay. Should we move on to 133? Yes. yes let's do should. it. All right. Championship, let's start. We got Fix Frost. Man. This was wild. Um, I didn't understand um, – Oh, it's JD's data thing. Thanks, guys. Um, thank you. <laughs> thank you. Um, oh, man. Yeah. <laughs> Someone just said off camera they f- that we feel like we're in a zoo. Yeah. We, we are at a convention right now. There's lots of people gathering around it's us. It's a convention. <laughs> I'm, lots I maybe am exaggerating a little bit. <laughs> I wish There's I a few people. <laughs> <laughs> lots There's of people. lots of people. There's Jeez, so many Tyler's people. <laughs> Tyler's very grandiose <laughs> in this way. It's like, yeah, everyone's just lining up. <laughs> there um, was more people a second ago. Yeah. <laughs> literally three people left, and then it. <laughs> It felt like it really cleared out. <laughs> um, man, the Ragus or the the Fix Frost match was crazy. Um, there were a few times it looked like Fix was going to score and score and score, and he couldn't quite finish takedowns. And then get into tiebreakers, pretty bad stalemate call. I don't think it probably would have changed the result, but you just kind of hate to see a, a call like that. Kevin Dresser's in the back. He goes, "Angel Rivera sucks as an official." Quote me on that. So I'm quoting you, Coach. Um, so Fix coming to this tournament was your pick to win this bracket. Yeah. He's been wrestling every match super close. I, How are yeah. you feeling about yeah, it? Yeah, I don't think he's going to win. <laughs> <laughs> wow. You're just I, selling immediately. Bro, I mean, I can't, like, change my pick, but um, I mean, Ragason beat Shaver 9-3. It's a great, you know, getting, mm, is that right? Yeah, it is right. Unless it's wrong on no, it was right. It was right. I for, I forgot he had a very late takedown when uh, Shaver was going going for broke a little bit. Yeah. So I don't know. I mean, maybe he gets it together. Fix is not. He's not scoring points. Um, but 
Still, I still think. Do so you think Ragazin would might beat Fix? For sure, he might. Absolutely. He I'm trying not to sound too much like a Michigan yeah. homer here. Yeah. Well, I'll just remind you, he power halved and pinned him. I time I remember that. that. So That's why he had the legs in. <laughs> And then he said, let me get the power half. Put the power I, on. I remember. Goes, you don't need to make me he, relive that. I don't know why you're going then he out of dropped your way. His, you, the see, elbow it really like you're going out of your way to do this. And then basically once I told he, you multiple times you can stop. And once he was on his back, he's like, all right, hold on. He squeezed him really, really hard, and the referee go boom. And then at that point, he was pinned officially. <laughs> and then the match was over. Okay. Thank you for for the I'm pretty sure imagery. that's how it went. It was, okay. Yep, that's what yep. happened. Mm -hmm. Um. But yeah, no, for sure, Ragusan could can win win this. And also, Vito just like was he just pranking us? Dude, he might have been. This is a classic prank. Yeah, so prank hygiene. The reason Christian's saying that is Vito had Kyrini, who's been nothing but great all year. For real. Um, he majored him thirteen to three, which is just wow. It's really good. I mean, now then again, um, Dayton majored Kyrini this year, but it just does feel like. Uh, Vito look better. But we'll see. He has not been able to beat Crookham this year. Yeah. Crookham's got to be like, I got to beat this guy again. I, how, I didn't get to see Crookham in Nasir's match at all. Kozak was really looking forward to that one. Yeah. I remember. I didn't, I didn't catch it. Okay. Catch much of it. I, was I, I don't want to skip over my boy, Dylan. He he got back his NCAA, or I'm sorry, Big Ten finals loss. He got teched yep. by Dylan Shaver and just beat him 9-3. to three. Yep. But an impressive. Very impressive win. Dylan all right. Beast. Should we pull up the blood round masters? Do it. Let's do it. All right. First, you got Shaver and Tex Teske. Oh, man. That was a crazy got one. It. Dude, at Big Tens, that was nuts. Yeah. I mean, if you're Teske, it's like, man, not bad. Although, look, Frost Wells is a uh, round 12. Phipps Bailey. Hold on. You're, sk you're skipping ahead. Well, nothing. Don't worry about it. Sorry. <laughs> um, Shaver, Teske, who do you think wins? I would favor Shaver, mm -hmm. but... It's gonna be a it's a coin flip type match for sure. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, Frost Wells. I mean, you got Tyler Wells. What is he doing? He, he beat he beat Van D and Latona back to back. That's a crazy run for Tyler Wells. I know that is that impressive. Um, What's uh, okay. <laughs> we're li we're uh, live right now. No yeah. worries. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um. Fr so yeah, I would favor Frost, but Wells is on an absolute heater right now. Yeah. Um, I'd favor Bailey over. Phipps. Mm -hmm. Me too. And then we cut Nagao Arini. That's a fire round That's of 12 That's a crazy match. round of 12 match. Uh, Nagao's gone tech, 5 one 3 -0. Nagao beat Buzakis round before a match he lost prior. Yeah. Feels like Nagao might do it. I don't know. I, I, honestly, Arini has not looked great. He had a 2-0 over Van D, which was kind of surprising to me. So uh, all bets are kind of off there. Yeah. All right. Should we move on to 141? Officially move on. Officially moving on. Okay. First quarter final. You got Mendez Hardy. Oh, my gosh, dude. <laughs> Did you watch that? Yeah. Poor Hardy, man. He got, he got splayed in front of the entire world. For, like, 40 seconds. Yeah, uncomfortable amount of time. Um, it was crazy because when he threw the near leg in, I was like, you won't. <laughs> and then, boom. He rolled if there's anything I've learned, it's that Jesse Mendez will. He absolutely <laughs> will. If you, <laughs> if you, you say you won't in that moment, he's like he, bet. He, yeah, <laughs> very much a bet sort of guy. Yeah, uh, savage. I mean, Mendez looks like he looks like the best guy in the country. Um, but he's got to be Anthony Echemendia, who who had a five three win over over Ryan Jack. Echemendia's <laughs> it's a tough matchup for Mendez, but the thing is with Jesse. He's so good on top now too. He's not just some neutral guy. He, he I mean, he tilted uh, Hardy before he splayed him. So, I feels like Mendez has too many tools to lose that match. Ooh, loud. Uh, yeah, dude, Mendez is just a dog. Officially, it was interesting hearing Etchemendia talk in his interview about how he thought he was done wrestling last year. He was in the stands watching. Yeah. Now he's an All American for Iowa State. He got really emotional talking about. How grateful he is to Kevin Dresser for giving him a second chance. It looked like Dresser was uh, – because he said, my coach is over here. It looked like Dresser was even getting a little emotional yeah. listening, which is, you know, pretty cool. And Etch he gave, Anthony, Anthony's been through a lot. He gave Younger a big shout-out, talked about how they're both from similar areas. They've known each other their whole lives, and yeah. it just means so much to be going through this with him. Um, 
So that was a pretty cool moment. Yeah, it was. How, Lachlan beat Real Woods. <laughs> I know. He locked up a cradle, right? He did, yeah. Nearside cradle, uh, rolled him through, and uh, got got big points at the end. There. What, what really do impressive. we think has been the difference between Real Woods this year and last year? Like what? I don't know. He was almost a juggernaut last year until he ran up against Alirez. This yeah. year, he's been kind of showing weakness all over the place. It yeah. was, you didn't expect that coming into this year. No, it really felt like it was his weight. He hasn't looked. I mean, I the signature thing for real in, in the past was he would come out so hard early, get an early takedown, and probably get a turn. And then it was almost like a little Spencer Lee. And then here recently, he's just not been able to get on top as much as, you know, this was 1 1 late. He beat McNeil at the Soldier Salute pretty decisively. It was like two or three takedowns to none. And, um,. So, yeah, that, that was Do you think guys are figuring him out, or do you think it's mental no, on his end? I don't think he looks the same to me. Yeah, um, it's interesting. And then uh, I hear Bartlett, Bartlett's first match with Kale Miller, first round yesterday, was really close. There, It looked like Kale may have had a takedown in the first period. Yeah. Um, Bartlett ended up pulling it out, winning 6-1. to one. Since then, he's gotten two pins. Andrew Howe style. Andrew Howe style <laughs> into the semis. Um, so he's looking great, too. Yeah, I mean, well, thing is, the, the Von Bar match, we're sitting there, we're like, what is he doing? What is he? It, it was 1-1 one, one late. Late, okay. late. So I wasn't really, I didn't see that. No, and then he, he locked up a cradle and pinned him. It, it was, well, he got a takedown to get 4-1, and then he cradled him and pinned him. Okay. But, yeah, he's got two pins at the end of it all, so pretty impressive. Big bonus for Penn State. Um, let's go to the blood round matches. There will be blood. First, we got Jack Belton. Mm, Jack. Jack. Hardy Coderhan. Brock. Yeah. Then we got Edmund Von Bar. Wow, Edmund. I knew he was. Edmund. Yeah, he did. Who's he had to beat? He beat Composto, Crook. All American. Composto and, Pro- and Crook. You yeah, know, he's got Vance Refrigeration. Yep. And then Happel who, versus. Who do you Wood. got, Edmund? Yeah. That would be good for Missouri. Yeah, they had a rough. Yeah, they had like five guys go 0 and 2. Yeah, tough for them. Very tough. And then the best, the best blood round match of this weight by far is Happel and Woods. Happel trying to be uh, the road warrior. He lost in round one, trying to come back. He's got to beat real Woods to do it. I don't know. You know, you got Sad Boy Hours as JD likes to call him. Dude, he's beaten some really good guys on this backside. Yeah. he beat Lemley and Matthews and Jameson and Jameson, bro. He, he Jameson, beat. Lemley, and Matthews. That's a hit list on the backside of this bracket. Uh, I, absolutely. I mean, Jameson had a, an awesome freshman year. Uh, Lemley, too. I mean, yeah. I thought Lemley was going to place. He majored Lemley 14-5. to five. And if you're Sergio Lemley, it's like, what the heck, man? It's like, I lost to Brock Hardy, Beast, All-American. And I lost to Kale Happel, Happel. the seventh seed. <laughs> In like, the round of 24. Yeah. Just bummer if you're him. Yep. And if you're a Michigan fan. Yes. Um, all right, should we move on to 149? Get it. Let's get it. Okay, first up, we got Lovitz Swiderski. I didn't get to really watch this weight very much because I was uh, in the back editing some stuff. Yeah, right. <laughs> how, did, uh, how did this match go? Um, well, I was interviewing someone at 141 during this one. But <laughs> I so came, we, oh, yeah, right. <laughs> like, I came out, and um, he was up 12-1. I was like, so I deduced that he took him down and then turned him several times. Yeah. Um, he won 14-4. to four. I did not think that would be a competitive match either. I'm not surprised. Really? No. Swiderski's not good on bottom. And yeah. And also, he's not um, – he's got good pace, but he's not a great finisher. And Ridge is like – you've seen him. He's like flexible yeah. and gumby and rolly and just really – he's really tough. Um, he's got Henson. Henson beat Waters 8-3. It was close for a little bit, and then going into that match, Waters had a great day yesterday. Yeah, I you were saying like you could have, you you were really interested in that match. Yeah, it was. It, but it, uh, Henson kind of shut him down. He well, yeah, he did. I mean, Waters. I, I didn't think Waters would be able to. I thought he'd struggle on his feet against him, but I thought the mat could be the difference. And at the end, he had an opportunity. If he rode out, it would have been it would have sent it into overtime. But Henson got away and then got a takedown and then got, got a little more. A little uglier than, than I thought. So I was editing something, but I was kind of trying to watch this match over my shoulder, the Arrington Gomez match. Gomez <laughs> is a weirdo. Final score was 12 to 9. Uh, here, let me click this real quick. He was up big. He 
was – sorry, I don't know if that messed up what was on the screen. But so Gomez had the first takedown. So they tra- – oh, no, Arrington had the first takedown. Then Gomez had an escape, got another takedown. Period two, Arrington has an escape. Gomez got two takedowns in the second period. Yeah. And then in the third, Arrington got – so Arrington got a takedown in the first and in the third. And – bunch of escapes gomez yeah gomez had a takedown in the first and second two takedowns in the second yeah Sorry, i probably broke that down way more than i needed to but yeah what it, time did he get his escapes can you, can you <laughs> elaborate shut up um, um but yeah that was a definitely high scoring high flying match as yeah. gomez likes to do he does um he's gonna have parko parko majored lamer now i yeah parko beat him last year beat gomez last year this tournament I, I, I don't, don't think you can say this is the same Gomez as last year this is the exact same Gomez <laughs> no I'm just kidding he's definitely he's healthier for sure he, and he goes to Michigan he so just I looks more expl- yeah and he goes to Michigan now bro but I, he is getting tired in these matches though yeah, he got he tired in round one against Crook and he got tired here against Arrington now Parko's not Mr. Pace guy but um, yeah, just something to be. What's yeah. your prediction? You're saying you think Parko's going to I mean, beat him? I picked Gomez to win the tournament. I'm not going to, like, go back on it. But but um, you're nervous. Yeah. It makes you nervous. I mean, yeah. You get you, if, tw- if Jack Crook's scoring 12 points on you, there's nerves. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's pull up the blood round matches. We got Waters Abyss. Oh, my gosh. That's fun. The fighting Brackies need this. Come on. <laughs> we got Swiderski D'Amelio. Who do you think wins that? I would guess Swiderski. Man, for D'Amelio, that's a pretty winnable. Yeah. I bet they've wrestled. Hold on, let me let me look, boss. While you look, thank you for calling me boss, addressing me as you should. We also <laughs> got Kinner and Lamer and Kasak and Arrington. How about Quinn Kinner? He got he got dumped on for his, his seed and he just made the he made the he round of twelve, which around, was yeah. his literal seed. <laughs> um All right, Dylan. All right. Oh my gosh, D'Amelio beat him at CKLV. What was the score? 13-10. 13-10. Classic. <laughs> so that might be an awesome blood round match. Yeah. Uh, I'm excited for Kasak Arrington. That'll be pretty big. Oh, yeah. That's a big one, too. I think are those both. Uh, I don't think Arrington's M2. I think he might be Young Guns. Um, I thought they were the same club, but ah. Ed Scott is uh, M2. Yeah, that's that's a crazy one. And K- Kasak, major pin major. And then you got sad, sad boy hours potential for for Jackson. Feels yeah. like feels like Kasak to me. Okay. Um, bold prediction. I don't think it's bold. I mean, I guess it is. <laughs> um, but I yeah, I think Lamer should get over the hump here against Kinner, but you never know. You never know. All right, moving on to 157. Great insight for me. You know what? You never know. You never know. You really do never know. This setup. Probably the most anticipated semifinal yeah. for the last, like, year. You yeah. got Haynes and Andonian coming up tonight. Caleb Piles envisioned this. He visualized <laughs> this. I said, I said, Caleb. The chances of this happening were so low. So low. I said, Caleb, he's majored him twice. He's like, he's going to do it. <laughs> I was like, no, he's not. And then he freaking. You're talking about Andonian and yeah, Scott? Yeah, Andonian beating Ed Scott. Yeah. He, freak, he comes out right away, takes him down. Um it was one of those. I like, didn't get to watch that match. I'm bu- I'm really bummed. It was basically everything you would have thought it would be. <laughs> it was just, it was wild and junky. It's like, I I can't they have the best matches. I don't think there's a more powerless feeling in life than sitting in Bryce Andonian's corner. <laughs> like you are, you have no, you are just offering nothing. You're just there for the hold the brick <laughs> for the ride, or just to say watch his knee or something like. He just he is just the most he just oh vibes. Gosh, he so just <laughs> operates on vibes only. Can you imagine coaching him? No. What do you think that's like? The, Tony Roby's gonna miss this guy, but he's gonna be like, <laughs> you know what? It might not be all bad. This it's, dude is crazy. It's so funny because even uh Ethan runs their, their social media. Yeah. Every time he makes a post about Bryce Andonian, he kinda nods like, kids, don't try this at home. Like <laughs> they, they, they say, he said in the most recent one, high schoolers, please don't reach back like the way Bryce does. No. Because he'll just reach back. He'll do – sorry, Nike shoes. I just smacked him. Yeah. He'll do 
everything you're not supposed to do. Yeah, and it works. And it works. <laughs> yeah, he, he does all kinds of crazy he's stuff. He's just an absolute madman. He's going to get massacred tonight, I think. Haynes, he's got to pin him. Haynes, you think he's going to get massacred by Haynes? Yeah. You don't think he pins him? Well, he got, <laughs> pin, he got pinned last time he wrestled him. That's true. Um, uh, Haynes shut down Rob. Again, yeah, eight zero. Haynes is just Haynes that, is he's that guy. Yeah, he's killing everyone. He's tech tech major of Peyton Rob. Yeah, he's a, he's ridiculous. Coming this so Andonian was did not wrestle most of the year. No, no one really knew how he was going to look coming to this tournament, and now he's in the semifinals, and we get the we get the rematch that I know that we were all secretly hoping for. That's awesome. Um, next up, Shapiro lost to Cardenas <laughs> again. Aren't you glad you sold on him? <laughs> I didn't sell. You sold so hard. I didn't. Um, it makes you look smart now. No. I want to look dumb. <laughs> I did not sell. See, I'm not changing. I'm not I'm not who you say I am, man. So uh, what happened? Shapiro was up 3-0. I heard he may have gotten hit in the head or... He may have. Um, he took like a concussion break for okay. a while. And he came back. He gave up a, a late takedown to lose. He was like... Uh, he was... Sort of fading or whatever. He d dove in on a shot and was extended, and Cardenas just defended and hit a go behind and won. So Cardenas um, beat Meyer at CKLV. So it was known that this was going to be sort of a match. Yeah. Uh, and it definitely was. Good for Cardenas. Officially a match. It was officially a match. Frannick and Teamer, how'd that go? Uh, nothing until, until the third period, and then. Um, Go blue! <laughs> Got a guy off camera saying yes, go there's blue. Once to me. again, thousands of people surrounding Tyler. <laughs> um, but no, Teamer, Teamer got a late uh, go behind to win uh, off a. Of, yeah, it was not not a ton going on there. How do you think? Uh, what well, wait? Jacory and Cardenas wrestled at CKLV, didn't they? They probably wrestled at Pac-12s. Um, I want to say Jacory kind of. Dominated him at CKLV. Yeah, I think you're right. Um, Cardenas. He beat him 5-4 at Pac-12. He beat him 7-5. Another time he measured him at Vegas. Yeah. So it's been getting closer. Um, if Teamer comes out this side, what do you think a match between him and Haynes looks like? I think, honestly, that's one of the tougher matchups for Levi. Really? Um, yeah. Uh, the only, only thing will be, can he... Um, can Levi in, impose his pace on him, right? That's what I'm not sure. Well, we can talk about it a little more tomorrow. Tomorrow. Yeah. When did we know it's actually going to happen? Yeah. All right, blood round matches for 157. You got Scott, Keller, Rob, Askey, wow. Downey, Frannick, and Lovett Shapiro. Whoa. Man, it's honestly not the most loaded blood round no. considering how loaded this weight is. I the first I'm, round of this weight was first, second round were pretty oh, deep. A lot of guys dropped out early, so... Downey Frannick, probably the best match. Yeah, that's the premier one. I would I would favor Frannick, but who knows? And Downey majored Blockus to make the blood round. Wow. That's really impressive. That is really impressive. Blo and Blockus beat <laughs> Blockus and Chittum had a 14 to 13 match. Oh, did. of course they did. <laughs> exactly. Exactly right. Wow. Wild tournament. Uh, so I think Scott beats Keller. I think Rob beats Askey. Frantic over Downey and Shapiro should be Love It. Mm -hmm. Love It broke my heart when he beat my boy Will Luan. That's so crazy to me. 4 1 sudden victory. You know what? You live by it, you die by <laughs> it. It's like you go 1 1 to overtime with, with, with Love It. Yeah. Oh. All right, 165. Sorry, I lost it for a second. Okay. 165. First, you got Keegan O'Toole. Anshul Taylor. He's just pinning everybody. He's pinning everybody. He's just like, yeah, that's just what he's basically doing. That's his main. <laughs> no, really nothing I, else I to add. Up, I picked up that's his main strategy for wrestling so far is that he just wants to pin the guys he's wrestling. David Carr with a pretty dominant win over Dean Hamidi. Yeah. 5-0. Uh, so that sets up O'Toole Carr semi. We knew it was going to happen probably. Yeah, we knew. It still it. sounds, it just sounds wrong. It sounds wrong. Semifinal between these two I know. Amazing guys. Um, yeah, I don't really have anything else to say about it. Well, it's going to be a great match. Um, Carr's not as far out as maybe it looked at Big 12s. I keep hearing – this is actually one thing I wanted to say. I'm, I'm not partial to either one of these guys. I, I love them both. I do keep hearing Keegan has his number, 
And I like, just feel like, how can you say that? They're they're split two to two. They're two and two. Yeah, and so much changed between their matches in the past. I don't know what makes th people think that the same can't happen, especially because David almost beat him. There was an exchange that he lost where Keegan just did some athletic freak stuff yeah. to come out on top. But if Carr won that exchange, he would have won their their uh, Big 12 final. So I don't think people should write David Carr off in this match. Um, but it sounds to me like a lot of people are doing that, That's which is shocking to, to yeah, me. Yeah, it's crazy. It's David Carr's world class. Yeah. I don't think – and, again, I don't think he's going to win, but he really can. He's super good. Yeah. Um, Calandio beat Ramirez. Mm -hmm. And, you know, that was kind of the shame of the, the Julian ducking of Carr, in, which pushed Carr up potentially. And then, you know, we could have had a, a mess and brink car, car semi. That would have been fire. That feels more right. Yeah. But it happened. So mm -hmm. Caliendo, mess and brink, that was really ugly last time. He, uh, yeah. he killed him at Big Ten. So Yeah. Uh, Amin, mess and brink. It was a little bit closer this time, but Mitchell beat him six to one. Man, he comes out so crazy. Yeah, his pressure is insane. It's suffocating. It seems it's it's really, really unique. And and Cam is someone who traditionally has a decent does a decent job of slowing guys down. Like he, yeah. Dean, Dean Hamity is all over guys, but he's never beat Cam because Cam has been able to slow him down yeah. in ways that a lot of guys haven't been able to. So you thought maybe he. Would be able to do that to Mitchell, yeah. but man, Mitchell is just something else. He's I don't know how he doesn't get dog tired. I don't know. Or maybe he does and he just it doesn't just, matter to him. He just, just still wrestles. Keeps killing. It's, I don't it's know. nuts to me. I I don't know how he doesn't get tired personally. Uh let's go to the blood round matches for this weight, one sixty five. We got Ooh. Hamity Olenek. Oh my gosh. That's <laughs> that was crazy. another all star classic yeah, match. In the round of twelve. Mm-hmm. Um Man, I would think Hamity. I thought Hamity last time, and then he I, lost, but it, it feels like Dean. To me, it felt like nothing against Olenek. It felt like he kind of stole that win yeah. at the All-Star Classic. Well, like he, he couldn't finish leg it. attacks. Yeah. Um, it was like four or five single legs. He, he got that finish. really nice ankle pick off Dean. The sickest takedown of the event. So awesome. Yeah. But it, it feels like it feels like Ham Hamity's match to lose. Yeah. Um, then you got Taylor Petrocelli, am I yeah. pronouncing that right? Yeah. Then you have Garvin Amin and Hall Ramirez. Man. Who do you have between Hall Ramirez? I'll take Peyton. He's yeah? Be he's beaten him before, pinned him before. But that's a Ramirez probably favored. I believe, is this Ramirez last year of eligibility? I have no idea. I don't know either. So uh, never mind, I'll save what I was going to say. All but right. Ramirez, very good guy to have never All-American. Yeah. If I mean, this is, is his last year of eligibility. If this is indeed goodbye. There's a man There's a man who who housed you. <laughs> That's right. What's up? How Co you guys doing? Co Coach Danny Felix. He, uh, he housed me when I was on my road trip across seven different Division I schools in seven days. He was homeless. Homeless vagrant. JD and I in West Virginia. And probably the coolest setup we stayed in. Ne'er do well. All right. That's enough. You know, you say some pl cool place. I raised $10,000 for charity. I don't know if you know that. Good job. Thank you. Wow. Just kidding. I can't believe I Did you find you. out if if Ramirez is his last yeah, this is his last I'm year? I'm crunching the numbers here. Um no, he should have another year. Okay, then I'm going to I'm going to save my breath. Okay. Uh moving on to 174. Man, the quarterfinal of all quarterfinals. Carter Sirachi versus Mikai Lewis. The one seed versus the returning national champ. I mean, Carter is that was a like he, He's just like that. He's just like that. Bro, I mean, he comes out. I mean, honestly, it was sort of a, a match without any he, – he stole it. Here. He just, like, took it out of Makai right away, and that mm -hmm. was it. He got the takedown, the ride out. Carter's, Carter's first two matches in this tournament, he gave up the first takedown. Yeah. So you think if he does that against Makai, that could be hard to come back against, against, like, a guy of Makai's caliber. But he made sure that that did not happen. But, uh, you know – you can look at it a couple of ways, but it felt like Makai did not force the issue at all. Like, he did not get – he didn't test Carter. I feel like he wasn't really attacking. I don't know. I didn't I didn't understand the the approach, really. Yeah. you got a guy that's clearly limited. To what scope, I'm not sure. 
But I watched Andrew Sparks and Adam Kemp take him down. He hadn't been taken down all year. So, I don't know. When, when the game plan, hey, what's up? Um, that's, one of, that's one of the first uh, message board buddies of mine. Oh, yeah? Oh, yeah. He knows the Virginia is for talk. lovers. Oh, yeah. That's, uh, that's. That was Christian's old screen name. Yeah, that's right. Most of our all listeners probably know that. Probably not. <laughs> um, what but, we, yeah, so Sirachi. you were talking about Sirachi. Lewis. Yeah. I mean, when he did that, I was like, all right, he's winning this tournament for sure now. Um, because I was not as sure. So, like, coming into the tournament, I was like, he'll still win. And then I watched his first match. I was like, oh. And then I watched the second match. I was like, probably not. And now I'm like, all right, he's zigging and zagging, but he's going to win. But he's got dude, this guy. National champion Shane Griffith. Sh- Shane Griffith. He was down. He was <laughs> Oh, my the, God. He was, he was losing, like, essentially 6-0. to zero. To Simba down now. So he was losing 5-0, then he, but he also got ridden hard. Yeah. So with riding time point, it was essentially six to zero. He got a late reversal in the second period, so it was five to two on the scoreboard. And then in, in the third, he gets two takedowns and, and rides out to win eight to seven. Yep, that was a crazy finish for Shane. Not not uh, you know you knew it was possible with him and his savvy, but man, it, it looked bleak there. Yeah, because in the early third, Sima. Ends up on the leg. Looks like he's about to get another takedown. Mm-hmm. I was like, oh, is he going to major this guy? Mm-hmm. And then. Simba, the 28 seed, took I, out Philip Canigliaro. Yep. Then he beat Aishins of UNC to, to meet Shane in the quarters. But after uh, Shane after Shane dug deep and won, he, he came back. He seemed uh, he seemed beat up a little bit. He had a cut above his eye. Oh. <laughs> I was like, are you all right? <laughs> he was like, yeah, Starachi's not feeling his best. I'm not feeling my best. But let's go do it. He had everything taped. Yeah. He had both his, like, quads, the knees. I thought he hurt his ankle. Was it his ankle? I I don't know. I don't know if I can uh, reveal up. reveal that information. Oh, so Christian. you know. You're, oh, so you're you looking know? for insider info that I can't give you. Okay, I know you have but, it. Um, but, yeah, I don't know what happened to our light. Uh, hopefully Christian doesn't look completely terrible now. I might. You already did. Uh, he did say he kind of called out Carter in the interview just a little bit. He said, Quasi I showed up to the duel. I wasn't feeling well. I know he wasn't feeling well. I put my toe on the mat, and, and Carter didn't. And then he was like, well, I'm not saying anything about that, but I'm excited to finally get to wrestle him. Yeah. Uh, potty mouth Wolverines. Oh, my gosh. They have, bad, go. they have bad profanity. Why? What makes you say that? Because Lucas Davison dropped a big old bomb on <laughs> to Quinn Kessinick. <laughs> I've heard that kind of profanity – towards Kent Kessinek since he was asking that guy if he's going to sell his horse. <laughs> <laughs> Look that up. Look that up. The I don't know the how bulge. you would Google that, but yeah, if he, you want to find asked, it, he was excited. He just beat the two seed. It just slipped out. It just slipped out. <laughs> he's Andrew House style. <laughs> yeah. He was, uh, Lucas Davidson was basically listing all the, the styles of, he was a gritty, tough, Andrew House style, and in between he may have let an Drop. expletive sl- slip, an yeah. F-bomb slip. He didn't mean it. <laughs> All right. I don't know why you brought that up while we're talking about 174. It was funny. Okay. That's why. <laughs> then uh, Rocco Welsh took out Edmund Ruth yep, finally. In, in sudden victory. Uh, why do you say finally? Because I keep at, say, saying it's going to happen, and it doesn't happen. <laughs> no, it finally happened. And then uh, Woolock. Is it Woolock? Woolock? Woolock. I say Woolock. Woolock. It could be anything. It looks like Woolock to me. He took out DeVos four to two. I know that's it's like. So it's kind of interesting. You have a true freshman or a true what? True freshman and Rocco Welsh. Freshman. Are you saying freshman? Never mind. Am I not saying freshman? I, I'm not sure. We'll have to go re- whatever, dude. Tape. We'll roll the tape. We have a true freshman and Rocco Welsh, or a uh, Lennox Woolock in Columbia seven seed. Those one of those two will be an NCAA finalist. Versus the other semi, you have two national champions <laughs> and another national champion already on the backside from that side. So that's it's kind of crazy. We knew that we knew that this uh, bracket was a little bit unevenly split, but uh, it's pretty crazy. Not, neither of these guys on the other side have been all Americans before. No. Now they are, and uh, they'll take on the winner of two national champions. So Welsh is a beast. Welsh is a beast. He could beat all these guys. Yeah. Oh yeah. You think he could beat Carter Strachey? This Carter. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Interesting. But, but let's get real. 
can and, and executing is just very different. <laughs> yeah, that's very true. All right, pulling up the blood round matches for 174. We got Sima and Passy. Passy? Passy? It's actually Pazook. Pazook. I only know that because JD told me. Okay. You got Sima and Pazook. Jeez. You got Lewis and Kennedy. That's kind of fun. Makai Lewis versus Patrick Kennedy in the blood round. Probably Feels not for wrong. Kennedy. Feels like they're t too, yeah. too good to be wrestling in the blood round. Yeah, I mean, you, uh, one of them Sima Pasuk, the other one's Makai <laughs> Lewis, Lewis Patrick and Kennedy. Patrick Kennedy. Yeah, it doesn't feel equal, but it's not equal. That's how it goes. And then you got Sax DeVos, yeah, Gaetan Ruth. Man, De DeVos won that last time. Sax was kind of coming at him like a honey badger at the end there. He's yeah. Sax is tough. Um, but I would favor DeVos there. And then Ruth should beat Gaetan. But Gaetan is weird. Um He's Gaetan's just, backside warrior. He's just going to try to pin him the whole time. Took out Wilson, took out Turley, and took out Kemp. Gaetan's another one of those dudes you're just like, no, no, yes, type of guys. <laughs> yeah. Like, what are you doing? Oh, okay, it worked. Yeah. Sick. A little bit of Rogatsky in him. Uh, all right, moving on to 184. Let's move. This weight, pretty uh, cut and dry. Kekaisen. He's such a beast. Over key. Man, Kekaisen is crazy. He, I, I've said it before on FRL, but he's been my favorite wrestler to watch this year. Just He wrestles like how uh, every coach wants their wrestler to wrestle. Like, yeah. He just does it, man. Tenacious. Uh, Munoz, big win over Pinto. Yeah, Munoz has dropped that match to Pinto before at CKLV. I don't know if they wrestled this year at CKLV. I know he lost to him last year at CKLV. Yeah. Um, and they, they both are... Similar styles, just you knew it was gonna be a close strong, match. tough guys. Um, Munoz in the semis again. He made the semis last year, but had the injury default out. So we'll actually get to see him wrestle Parker this time. That's a good point. I forgot about that. Yeah, and then uh, you plot plot took it to Truax, man. Dude, he gave up the first takedown. And he's like, all right, let me just smash this dude. Sixteen to six, major decision. Yeah, plot's plot's been great this year. Feels like he should beat Salazar. Yeah, Salazar. Man, I mean, TJ Stewart all but all but won it. Um, he was up four one late, and gives up a stall point in the last like five seconds as he's getting taken down to lose five four. Yep, uh, or six four I guess with riding time. Yeah, man, that was it was a dog move by Salazar. It really was. Yeah, uh, I didn't get to fully watch that match, but Spay in our chat was saying that he didn't cut him right away. He wore him out a little bit, stayed on top for a little bit, and. Uh, before he ended up cutting him to get yeah. the takedown. So, and I'm wondering if that's when he got his warning. Let me click, uh, click, click. Yeah, go ahead and click that. I'll, I'll take a Make click. fun of me for how I say freshman. You were saying freshman, I swear. I don't believe you for a second. Um, yeah, he got hit for stalling early in the third. Yep. Anyway. So we haven't really seen Kekai's and Munoz. Uh, how do you think that match goes? Do you think Munoz Man. can slow him down? Can anyone slow down Parker Kekaisen? No, you shouldn't try. Yeah. Um, well, I guess maybe you should. I don't know. You want to just go at? I don't know what the move is with Parker. <laughs> Nothing works yet. Um, Munoz is a really good athlete. He's big and he can move. Um, I think it's, this is going to be. This is not going to be like Parker's other matches. It's going to be close. Yeah, um, I agree. If, there's, if this was major, I'd be pretty surprised. Um, but yeah, you got to favor Parker. Yeah. And then Plot Salazar, you already said it. You got a favor Plot. I think Plot. Yeah. Yeah. All right, let's go to Blood Round. We got Pinto Bergy, Key Whoa. Hawks, Focus Stewart, and Fishback Truex. All right, these are some great matches. Okay, so Pinto Bergy lost in round one. He's battled all the way back. Mm -hmm. he's, now he's got to beat. Um, He's got to be Pinto. I would not favor. Um, I would not favor. <laughs> Since the guy's asking me if Flo's come out with a shoe line, he's, he wants to know what. Yeah. I don't. I think these are custom. I don't know if you can buy these. Yeah, I don't think so. Um, Pinto, I think I would favor him over Bergy, but Bergy's hot. Um, Hawks. <laughs> Bergy's hot. <laughs> but Bergy's hot. He's so hot right now. So hot right now. It's like, what's the name? Are you thinking of Zoolander? Yeah, but who's he say so? 
Uh, Hansel. Uh, Hansel is very hot right now. <laughs> yeah, just butcher it. Go ahead. Uh, then you got I'm doing my best. <laughs> you got Key and Hawks. I'm on death's door. <laughs> you got Key and Hawks. And who, yeah, who do you got for Key and Hawks? Hawks. Okay. Foka Stewart. What the heck? Man, Foka. I don't know. Backs out Foka, Warrior. Foka. So talk about Foka Azarov. He couldn't beat this guy all year. He's an enigma. He, he texts him in the first period. He, he defies explanation, logic. Chris Foka makes no sense ever. <laughs> and he didn't make sense yesterday, and he doesn't make sense today. It didn't make sense why he stopped wrestling, and it really doesn't make sense that he tech-balled a guy he was 0-3 against, and he texts him in the first period. So Foka lost first round. He beat Duvall. Then we all saw on the backside he had Azarov, who he just hasn't been able to beat this year. We he's 0 and 3. <laughs> he's 0 and 3. He got this and he year. teched him in the first period. Tyler, that doesn't make sense. <laughs> then he majored Jaden Bullock of Michigan, who, who's that's a Michigan man, a, and, no a Vir- and a Virginian, and a Virginian. If Chris Foka beats back-to-back Virginians, yeah, man. Now he has. Now, now, he has, now uh, you've got beef with me, Chris. <laughs> Just kidding. I like Chris Foka is like one of the nicest dudes. Yeah. Then he has a now he's Stewart of Virginia Tech. Who was a second away from being a semifinalist? Don't, don't ask me who's going to win that match. I don't know. Those guys yeah. don't know. Yeah. There's no. There, that's a. That's a. That's a vibes match. It's a vibes match. And Fishback Truex, probably go to go with Truex. I reckon. You reckon? I would favor him. Yeah. All right. Moving on. One ninety-seven. All right. I mean, Aaron Brooks is just killing everybody. We've been. It's we all knew. Up. Like, just. Kind of circled from the beginning of this tournament. We all kind of circled the Brooks Hydley final, but um, it's still fun seeing how the rest of those brackets shaking out. Brooks over Buchanan, he, he pinned him. Yeah, he pinned him. He pinned him in the what was it a half? It was like um, it was like a, I forget how he took him over. Now he pinned uh, what's it, Novak with a bar half. Yes. This one I forget how he pinned him, but he pinned Buchanan, who coming into this year. A lot of people thought he was like the num- solid number three guy. Yeah, not so much. He was the eight seed this this uh, tournament, but p- man, pinning that guy crazy is not in the first period is nuts. I wonder, I'm gonna look up if he's been pinned like in his college career. Rocky Elam, the 12 seed, 12 seed up and down season. He just beat Michael Beard, who ha- I think only lost once this year, Beard, twice. Beard's been a total beast this year. Too. Um, he just beat Michael Beard eight to two. Yeah. And Beard was looking great this tournament. A tech fall on a major into the quarters. Absolutely. Um, I'm trying to see if this guy's Rocky. Been. Rocky had to beat Cardenas, the fifth seed, as well, to make it to that match. So he's he's going on a little – he's streaking right now. Yeah, seriously. So good for Rocky Elam. Um, are, you, are you looking up to see if uh, – He's been pinned. He has Owen Penn's build it, pinned him, but Owen oh, Pence, Owen <laughs> he kind of <laughs> like likes that. to do that to, to guys. I can't believe you remember Owen Pence. I know that because I was sent to the Southern Scuffle, not this last year, but the year before that. Yeah, Owen Pence pinned the at the time the number one guy. It From was Reiner, uh, yeah, Laird. Ra- yeah, Ethan Laird. Yeah, and he pinned him. So and then uh, in the comments, everyone was like, he loves to pin the number one guy. <laughs> Dude, he really does. It's like his favorite. Um, and then Sloan over to Prez, Tech Fall. Impressive. That's to really one. impressive. Yep. And uh, Hydley over all red, 11 to 3. Yep. Ho hum win for Trent. What do you think a match between Hydley and Sloan looks like? It feels like Trent should be able to beat him up a little bit, overwhelm him, but um, man, seeing Sloan put that many points on Lou Dupre it, it could, could be closer than I thought yeah. originally. Yeah. Do you think he can kind of like bully him the way he bullies guys? That's, I mean, that's the question. I don't know. Um, Sloan's not really one to get bullied. Yeah. So it could be a lot closer than people realize. What do you think Brooks uh, Elam looks like? <laughs> Come on, bro. All right, let's pull up the blood round for 197. We got Beard and the GOAT Andy Smith. <laughs> Andy Smith is Nothing Christian's about respect. <laughs> Nothing but respect to the GOAT. <laughs> Great season. Andy Smith. Great season for the GOAT. <laughs> We're just going to focus on the positives right now. <laughs> not that he's got a 
He's got a really he's got tough a, match. He's got beard. an angry Michael Beard. Who did he beat on the top side that was really good? I'm trying to remember. Glazier. Yeah, Glazier. Yeah. Um, we got Buchanan Poznanski. Wow. Poz got, round of 12. That's good for him. Yeah. Cardenas Allred. That's and Cardenas trucked Allred at CKLV. I remember being shocked by yeah, it. Yeah, that was stunning. I, I couldn't believe it. Because Allred was, at the time, returning Big Ten champion. Like, yeah. Pretty solid dude. And Jacob Cardenas could not stop blast double aching him. Yeah. It was. It feels was like Allred's kind of righted the ship a little bit. Uh, yeah. I would be stunned if it looked like that. Um, and then Little. Little and Deprez. Little beat Glazier. In Little Rock is in a position to not only get one All American, but two. They're really good. I mean, Neil Ayersman is just. He's. This is a legendary performance. I mean, my nose is running, guys. Yeah, There's I no, see it. nothing I can do about it. It's like. See, you don't have a lot of options. It's just me and him on the show. I could just get up and blow my nose, okay? <laughs> or I could just let it fall, and you guys would see that because we're, we're live streaming this. Mm -hmm. Or I can just wipe my nose on the show, which eh, I think it's the best of the I think it's the, the best of both worlds. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, who do you think wins between Little and Depress? Um, honestly, I would, I would favor Stephen Little. Okay. Candidly. Um, did, we, did you say Buchanan pause? Buchanan, I would favor Buchanan. And you favor Beard over Smith, over your goat? Absolutely not. You favor your goat Andy Smith over Beard? Yes. I'm quoting you on that. Quote it. Okay. Um, I love Andy Smith, man. When Court we reporter. visited Virginia Tech, he was awesome. Yeah, because he's a Virginian. Okay, that's enough. I, I'm starting to dislike him just because of you. <laughs> All right. Eli Herring, let's go. That guy eats chicken wings like crazy. I believe you. He could eat more than you. I have no reason to doubt that. Yeah. <laughs> 285. Feldman almost beat Kirkfleet. Bro, he really did. I mean, it was 1-0. He's like, let me just take him down real quick. And he almost did. Yeah. Nice single leg. Super slick. Just He does this thing where he shoots a single, and then he tries to cut the head inside and double off. And it's just it gets those big guys. They can get their hips on top yeah. of you. Um. Feels like he'd want to get back backside. He wants to see my shoes. Oh, he wants these shoes. Eli. <laughs> um, Kirkley won one to zero against Feldman. Yeah, it was crazy. Kind of shocking. You you would expect him to go get one almost. Well, it got closer every time. Yeah. He killed him in the duel, and then he gave up the first takedown at Big Tens, and then they played it a lot closer. I'm not gonna lie to you. After CKLV, I sold my Feldman stock. True freshman. He didn't get to run or. He's basically a true freshman because he was injured all last year. Didn't get to do any of the things. So that's why you got to let these young guys develop. Yeah, and he's done that. Yeah. He looks great. He, yeah, he looks awesome. He's gotten he, a lot better. He has beaten twice this year. The Bassets. What's up, guys? What's up? What's <laughs> How you up? doing? He's beaten twice this year. The man who just took out two-seed Younger Davis. Yep, Younger Davis. Younger Davis. Younger Basita. Yes. Feldman has beaten Lucas Davison twice this year. Yep. Um. And Lucas just, just took, let's, took, let's talk about it, just took out Younger Bastida. We kind of talked about it at the top of the show. We did, but you want to talk about it twice because yeah. we went to Michigan. <laughs> no, big upset. Big surprise. Um, Hendrickson's look good, not otherworldly. Um, I think that's a real match. Between Hendrickson and Davidson? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yep. yep. Have they wrestled before? Uh, if they have. I want to say they wrestled like CKLV like a couple years ago. You might be thinking about Mason. Um uh, no, I. I don't know. Let me look. You might be right. If that it's that it's definitely there. That would be where they wrestle. I think they've all wrestled the, each oh, other yeah. at CKLV. NCAs last year, he got pin slayed. Ooh, that's it. That's it. Yeah. Nowhere to go but. Nowhere to go but up from think, there. Yeah. Or I wonder how he got pinned. I wonder what the score was. Any way for you to see that? I mean, the internet. All right, forget about it. Um, I'll, yeah. So we got Davison Hendrickson and Schultz Kirkfleet. Have Schultz and Kirkfleet wrestled? Yeah. Um, a couple of years ago, I'm pretty sure they wrestled. Let me look here. Okay. While you look, I'm going to pull up the blood round matches for 285. 14-8. 14-8. 2021 for, for, for Colton. Colton. Kirkfleet is a different guy than 2021. 2021, he, like, did, did he all American? He did like four practices and then went to Big Ten yeah. and then NCAs and placed. He got seventh. Seventh. Yeah. So that might be fun though. Um, Kirkley normally bigger than the guys he wrestles. 
Yes. But, but will not be bigger than Colton Schultz. No. Who weighed in probably at like 283. I don't know. We'll have to ask Caleb. How yeah. Much he weighed. Uh, blood round, we got Taylor Gadali, Feldman Heinzelman, Slavikuski Bastida, and Kaka Elam. Kaka? Kaka. Kaka. Let's go. Look at that. How do you do that? You got a lot of Virginia boys in the blood round. Oh, what can you say? Kaka lost first round, beat Stoddard of Army, Hill of Iowa, Greece of Navy to make the blood round against Zach Elam. Yeah, that that's a that's a fortuitous path. So I think it ends here. Yeah. Uh, probably, if I had to guess. Uh, this feels pretty cut and dry. Elam, uh, Bastida. Mm -hmm. Poor Slava uh, Feldman for sure over Heinzelman. And then this is, man, Taylor Gadali is crazy. Um, Taylor is really tough. I'd probably favor him. Taylor was the three seed, I believe, right? No. Am I No, he just got a higher seed than He's I. He's like the five. Okay, yeah. You're right. Yeah. Sorry. It's okay. <laughs> you're, you're just, no, you're doing good. I complimented you about how much you, like, know about wrestling. Like, this guy was asking, you know, very basic questions in wrestling, like, Where's Northern Colorado? And no, I did not. I, I wanted to know. Shut up. I want to know the city it was in. The direct I knew it was quote, in Northern Colorado. The direct quote is, "Where's Northern Colorado?" So there was, we had a, <laughs> it was a steep learning curve, and we're we're climbing the hill. It's true. I when I was hired for this job, they assumed that I would be the a subject matter expertise because I just expert because I. Yeah. Just came off of a Big Ten team. Little did they know, I did not know half of the Big Ten coaches that I was wrestling against. But he's a quick – yeah, who's Brandon Eggham? He asked You're that. really going to say that live on air? I have to. <laughs> I'm I had so to. embarrassed. I, yeah. That's so crazy. I'm good. To, you that's were, so crazy of you to out me for You that. should be embarrassed. <laughs> I've man. known now for a long time. I know. I know. But wow. that's just the show. It's, it's called growth. Brandon <laughs> Eggham's a nice guy. He would probably laugh at that. Um <laughs> Just when you're wrestling, you just you just pay less attention. You yeah. just you know, I don't know. Doing your own thing. I was doing my own thing. Should we go back to teams at all? No. Okay. I think we should go. We should go. This is a great show. Take us off. Yeah. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. This was a blast. We'll be back here tomorrow between sessions as well. Um, what do I have to say? Make sure you're watching the semis and blood on. This is the best evening of wrestling that the exists. Famed dog bone uh, what's it called? Dog bone formation. Yeah, dog bone. It, it looks like a dog bone. You got the semis in the middle. You got blood run on the outside. You got dreams being made and dreams being, being destroyed. Killed. Being killed. Murdered. Murdered. And it's great. Yeah, <laughs> it's great. Dreams made, dreams killed. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Thanks to Nike for getting us the space where we can do this. Mm -hmm. And we look like we're cool. And for the awesome Michigan shirt. Yeah, and this shirt, which mm -hmm. is not Michigan. It should be. And the nice shoes. They're not ours. Maybe these will come back to the studio. I don't know about that. I would that. love that. They glow. Yeah, they glow. A lot of people have been asking about They're it. They're more blinky. All right. All right. I don't know what that I don't means. know what he said. What did he say? I don't know, but see ya. Bye, guys. <laughs>